Testing, testing, testing. I hope this sounds good. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Can you hear me all right? Just checking my broadcast. I think it's going to go well. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen Kerbal Space Program, this is a game where you manage and control every aspect of your space program. And there are different modes um, to start out with. Uh, you have sandbox mode, which is pretty much the god mode in the game, where you have unlimited parts, unlimited money, all of the, everything unlocked. And while it does sound extremely powerful, and it is, you still have to manually fly out your ships to these planets and moons um, for those that are unfamiliar. In science mode, you have the same thing as sandbox mode, unlimited parts, unlimited money, but you have the challenge of gathering, doing missions to gather data and unlock new parts using science to allow you to go farther in the game. And career mode is kind of the culmination of all that. You have the, you have to manage the science, you have to manage funds, reputation, and everything like that. And it's a really awesome game because nothing is handed to you. And this is absolutely massive. I mean, if we scroll in, welcome to Kerbin. It's the analog for Earth. And uh, yeah, it's, I think, pr don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure this game is on like a one fifth scale of the universe or at least our solar system. And I'm playing this because uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 is coming out in February in early access, finally after three years of being pushed back. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. How are you? Hey man, how's it going man? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you're well. But yeah, we have Kerbin, which is Earth. We have the Mun, or the Moon. Minmus is a fictional moon that does not exist in real life, of course. Um, but yeah, it's a interesting little planet. Or I say moon, rather. It's been so long. It has, actually. I haven't streamed in a while. Uh, college is, you know, kind of... It makes you busy, bro. Uh, so we have the sun called Kerbal. This is the Kerbal system. We have Moho, which is Mercury, Eve, Venus... Eve has a moon, tiny moon called Gilly. We have Duna, which is Mars, with one moon called Ike. We've got Dress, which is 
not actually it's a planet in the game but it's not actually a planet in real life it's um the analog to one of the dwarf moons uh series and eros i believe or his dress uh we have uh jewel which is jupiter with a few moons a smattering of moons we've got paul the outermost one bop a very tiny moon tylo just a rocky world val i've actually never been to val in the game i i haven't played this game that much honestly i have about 40 hours but in this game it's so long and then lathe a water-filled world which is very interesting enough as you can see very interesting so that's jewel and the last planet we have is elu which is pretty much pluto a very tiny ice ball of a planet <laughs> really far out really hard to get to and there's honestly not much here i've only been here once in a career mode so but back on our home town of Kerbin and the rest of the system this game has fully realistic physics at least for the most part um obviously there are glitches and things and physics goof ups but those don't happen too too often obviously some rendering stuff can get janky a little bit depending on how crazy you go with this game but at the end of the day it's a really really sick game and uh, i kind of want to use this as a uh, time to do a run through oh my goodness the frames are horrible there we go so yeah this is kerbin this is the kerbal space center you can actually see the moon there in the distance uh, we've got the vehicle assembly building where you build your actual rockets the research and development where you unlock different parts and stuff tracking station where you can view your missions and fly them from there launch pad obviously space plane hangar you can build space planes that can actually go in space but are mostly used for actual flight on kerbin mission control that's in career mode only astronaut complex if your kerbals um go missing <laughs> or die is the uh that's putting it bluntly you can always hire more so there's uh there's a ton of them and they're all ready to go uh and then that's for more for career mode stuff and then we have another tiny little island airfield that no one really uses uh so yeah let's get it i'm gonna go here to show you some stuff in science mode the tech tree is the ultimate goal in this game you want to unlock in this particular mode you want to unlock all of the parts and so it starts off with things like five science points for a few fuel tanks and an engine and that's it just keeps going up and up that's 20 science this is 45 this level is 90 160 300 550 and then a thousand science and so you'll kind of see how kind of in depth this game can get which is pretty pretty cool stuff I mean, you can do some crazy stuff. There's a rechargeable battery bank, fuel cells. Huh. RTGs. Anyway. I'm just looking at some of the stuff, because I've actually never completed this game. It's so big. Will you be streaming more consistent? Um, Honestly, bro, I have no idea. Hopefully, maybe a little bit with winter break coming up. Um, But just, you know, 18 credit hours is quite a bit for college so but at any rate here we are at the assembly building we only have a few parts we've got a command pod a solid rocket motor and a parachute that's pretty much all we got oh and we have science goo so these are the four parts that you start out with wait one two three four yeah i make sure i'm good at math so solid rocket boosters they once ignited they provide a consistent amount of thrust that cannot be turned off once ignited liquid fuel can be controlled more it's heavier but it can be controlled and saved for use on long flights and so you kind of will have to work your way through that command pod one person parachute and this science goo which you use to get data it's one of the few i say few one of the many tools you can use to collect science and so for now we're gonna start off, what should we call this? Anyone wanna name this rocket? Name this rocket. Oh, I'll wait a second for names to come in. Okay. 
Just rocket? Okay. Alright, we'll call it rocket with no caps. How dare you ignore my wife? How dare you? I'm not even gonna touch it. Don't even ask, bro. It's not worth it. Alright, so we're gonna save and launch, and we're just gonna go for a, a little jaunt. Well, actually, we're gonna do one thing first. We're gonna get some basic signs from the launch pad, because you can get signs from the launch pad, so we're gonna observe the goo. Mr. Goo observation from launch pad. The goo doesn't seem to be doing too much right now. That's a whopping three science. And so the most effective way to get science is uh, to keep the experiment. Um, but sometimes you can transmit the science if you have a connection back to the Kerbal Space Center or KSC. Um, but oftentimes it's at a loss in science. So we're just going to keep this and we're also going to do a crew report. That's one and a half signs. Wow, so much money. This is actually one of the ones where you can transmit it and it doesn't um, negatively impact your science value. And then we're also going to do a quick EVA. And I'm going to jump off and let go. Oh, I fell. Let's say hello to Jebediah. He is our intrepid explorer. So let's just do a EVA report and get two and a half science roundabout. And then we're going to take a surface sample. The surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of a conspicuous green substance. Nine science. So, um... We definitely cooked one of them. Uh, anyway, moving on. Let's, uh, can I, I don't, I can't even get back up there, but that's fine. We can just recover. Recover vessel, get the basic science that we have. And I'm actually going to recover the rest of this. And that gives us nine and a half signs. But, honestly, I'm not even going to unlock anything yet. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold on and get some more science points. I'm actually going to go for a flight first. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So we're going to enable SAS, which is the flight stabilizer system. It usually works when you have a pilot, although sometimes it, um, if you don't have a pilot, if you have a remote control unit, uh, an unmanned vehicle. Sometimes, depending on the model you get, they can't use SAS. It's very, very helpful. But anyway, we're just gonna kick this off with, uh, we're gonna press the spacebar to start the staging. We're just gonna fly, and we're gonna pitch a little bit this way. Or yaw, actually. Pitches up and down, rolls side to side. And so, yeah, we couldn't stop that once we started it. And so we're just gonna fly up, and then once we get to a certain once we get back down to the ground, I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna launch this ship probably two or three times to get as most science as I can from the surrounding areas, from the water, from the shores, from the grasslands. I probably won't care enough to go for the mountains because usually you have to walk there a little bit this early in the game. I mean, I'm sure I could come up with something, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna do it this way. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm time warping. This is called physics time warp, which it still applies. It keeps the physics engine rolling as you speed up time. It has a maximum usage of four times normal time. And uh, so, yeah, that allows physics to continue happening while your ship is flying. And so that's like the first thing. But then the second kind of time warp is just the extended time warp which uh, can happen while you're on a planet, at the Kerbal Space Center, or on a different body, celestial body, or just floating around in space. You can do bigger time warps, and I'll show you that in a minute. Because this game, I'm going to speed this up, this game is played in real time, so this has taken, well, I say, its mission time is just about to hit three minutes, but it's taken us, if you excuse the time warp, about maybe two minutes. And so when you get into space, that time very quickly adds up. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to observe the goo from the grasslands. That's three science. I'm going to do a crew report. One and a half. Go EVA. Do an EVA report here. I'm actually going to knock the thing over. Can I? Whoa. Perfect. So then I'm going to go EVA again. I'm going to jump off. 
and I'm going to already got an AVA report. I'm going to do a surface sample. <laughs> yeah, it does look like dirt. Uh, it's a free nine science. I'm just going to get back in the spaceship now and recover vessel to go back to the KSC. So now we should have a decent amount of science. Now we can start to unlock some things. I should have about 20 science now. 26, perfect. And now we can go get the basic rocketry to get our first liquid fuel engine. And another solid fuel. And I'm also going to get... Ooh. I'm also going to get engineering 101. Because that gives us a decoupler so we can have different stages. And we have a thermometer for more science. A communitron, which is just a radio antenna, so that way we can send our data and it increases the, uh, it increases, it like decreases the percent of, like the science degrades by when you transmit it. And this is just another version of it for side mounting. So we, we want that. So general rocketry is 20, that's a bigger, or not a bigger one, it's a different version of the swivel engine. It's another liquid fuel engine. We have a bigger solid fuel booster and a bigger liquid fuel tank. If we get stability, we can have a nose cone for the top of our parts if we don't have a parachute on it, a winglet for some control on the vessel, and a radial decoupler. Survivability, we can have some heat shields. I'm gonna go for this one because it gives us the, uh, this one gives us the barometer and that gives us more science. That's another science experiment we can do. And so that gives us some heat shields, some radiator panels, and landing legs. So that is, uh, we need some of that. So now it's time to build another rocket. And so while I'm building this rocket, uh, y'all should put another rocket name in chat. What should we call the next one? So this rocket is now done. We have a liquid fuel engine, four liquid fuel tanks of the tiny ones, a decoupler, and we don't need a heat shield, we're not going that high up. We have a couple Mr. Goos to do uh, experiments and a few different situations, and we have two thermometers and two barometers. And so what should we call it? Oh. Oh dear. Okay. It's not me. It's not me. Let the record show. I did not pick this name. Jebediah, I promise you won't die in here, my brother. Alright, so this time I'm just gonna... Okay, so now, the throttle gauge at the bottom, which I can control slowly with shift and control, or I can put all the way up with a Z or all the way off with X. And so now that matters, because this is liquid fuel, so we can control the burn. Over here we have our G-Force gauge, and these are some sciencey stuff that you'll figure out in a little bit that I'll explain later. Here's our handsome soldier Jebediah in the bottom right. Some statistical information. And here's our staging. So staging is now important because we don't want, if we do this, we don't want our parachute and decoupler going off at the same time. That's, you know, that's just not productive. We want to have them fire separately. That way we don't accidentally destroy this. Uh, when we set this off, we don't want the parachute to deploy. That way, in case we're going too fast, the parachute doesn't get destroyed from the heat, and then it will just become Jebediah's coffin. And um, that's not cash money. So real quick, I'm going to do, I don't, this is the first time using the barometer and the thermometer, so I'm going to quick grab a uh, temperature log. Right now we're at 308.85 Kelvin. Temperature readings are quite literally nominal. And we get an extra three and a half science from that. So now let's actually launch the ship. Our thrust to weight ratio is actually very nice right now. So we can go click this button in the bottom. That shows our apoapsis, periapsis, and time to reach and then period. 
So essentially what all that, uh, oh dear, I'm falling. Okay. We're fine. This is fine. I'm gonna click around some science experiments real quick. <laughs> Seven. 84. 56. And I'm gonna do a crew report while flying. Cause you can get different science for different situations. And I'm actually gonna EVA and get a science report from here. <laughs> this is the most precarious situation indeed. Keep that and quickly get back in the ship. He has a parachute, don't worry. He has his own standalone parachute. And I'm actually just gonna decouple that and send off the parachute. That way we can just get down faster. I did do the science before. He, he's not going to die. Look at him. Here, we can go to his view. This is a Jebediah's view inside the cockpit. Food, not food, air, our speed, throttle, a map, the nav ball, which is helps direct you, a degrees, vertical speed, mission time, altitude gauge, and all kinds of cool things. Toothbrush and laundry. Anyway, let's go back to our view here. Help, I am under the water. <laughs> That's a good meme. <laughs> Alright. So now we've got all the science from all of the different situations that we did on that one mission alone. And now we're up to 37 science. So you can see it adds up quite quickly. So now we can go back to our tech tree and unlock some stuff. We can get... Can't quite get basic science, although I really want to, because I really want this. This thing gives you so much science, it's not even funny. And also a uh, probe core. I'm going to get general rocketry for the increased boosters. And I'm just short of getting stability as well. Stability is going to come next. All right, so now, all right, we need another name for a rocket. Come on. While I'm building this, you guys come up with another name. <laughs> I'm not gonna use that one. What should we call this? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna shorten his name to Jeb. So this time, we're gonna use a solid fuel booster on the bottom. So we won't be able to control it once we do it, but that's fine, because we're not really going much of anywhere. We've still got quite good thrust to weight ratio. And so now all I'm trying to do is go higher in the sky. That way I can enter the, instead of just flying at Kerbin, we can do lower atmosphere. And then later we can do upper atmosphere. So we are now quickly approaching a speed that is quite fast, over 1,200 meters per second, which is really freaking fast. I don't know about you guys. All right, we're getting our data from the upper atmosphere. Run our mystery goose. Nine science. The goose getting very cold. Upper atmosphere, seven science. Pressure scan, ten science. Um, we already got a crew report, so now we can get an EVA report, now that we're not accelerating anymore. You're starting to feel you should really get back inside this ship. That's probably a good idea. Alright, so the music has changed. And that is because we have crossed what is called the Carmen Line, which is the official 
internationally recognized border between Earth and space. And that is at 70 kilometers in the sky, or 70,000 meters. That is the border. That is where Earth's atmosphere starts. And it is the same thing here in Kerbal Space Program. So right now, we have a really long way to go. We've got an apoapsis of... Holy frick. 22,000 meters. So we can actually do... We can actually do another EVA real quick, and we can actually do uh, in space. That's some science. We can do this one as well. Oh, I have to get back inside to do the mystery goose since I'm not a scientist Kerbal, I'm a pilot Kerbal. Ten science for that one. Eight science from that. And twelve science from that. Perfect. So now I'm going to put back on the auto SAS. I'm going to decouple that. We don't need it. I don't need it anymore, it's empty. And so now I'm just going to use the bigger time warp. Right now we're time warping by a speed of 50. So time is happening in the game 50 times real time. Alright, so now time warp stops. Now that we're back in the atmosphere, it has to simulate the physics of the environment. And so now we plummet back to Earth. The coffin is going to get on fire again. But really quickly... Get back in. <laughs> okay. I was flirting with the danger a little bit there as Jebediah was still inside the coffin. Command pod. As he was reaching a very high speed. We were hitting the universe at hitting the atmosphere at quite a severe angle. But that's alright. We have um we have enough velocity here. It's fine. And so now I'm just going to spare Jebediah his, uh, his misery and uh, deploy this chute. And I'm just going to time warp the rest of the way down. I did not try to set him on fire. It wasn't burning that badly. He was fine. And I'm going to time warp the rest of the way. Don't worry about it. Jedediah is perfectly fine. I will let you know when he is in danger. Alright, so now we've splashed down at Kerbin and we can just go and do the... get our science points. He wasn't drowning, he was in the capsule. Oh my goodness. Alright, we've got a lot of science here. We did a bunch of stuff from upper atmosphere and suborbital flight. That's just what that was. We went outside the atmosphere and then came back in. That's called a suborbital flight. Uh, we've got data from Kerbin's upper atmosphere and from space near Kerbin. So now we can get the uh, Science Junior, which is a very powerful piece of science. Uh, next, I'm going to get the radial decouplers that allows us to attach things to the side of the ship. And now I can't buy anything else. I think next I'm going to go for is probably general construction, because strut connectors are really important. Alright. Okay. We're designing a whole new rocket now. I'm gonna leave in the command pod because I don't feel like putting all the science modules back on. So now what's happening is I'm putting the science junior under the decoupler. So what's gonna happen is usually I can just store the data inside the science modules like the mystery gear, the barometer and thermometer. But as you saw in the thing, sometimes they can get destroyed by the heat. And so what you can do is you can click on them, take the data from them, which will turn them off and you can't use them anymore. And you can store that data inside the command pod. That way it's a little bit safer. Jebediah's grave. Okay. So we're going to put on a couple fuel tanks, a swivel engine. And so, okay. So if you look at the stats, the Reliant engine is a little bit lighter, a little bit more powerful than the swivel engine. 
So why on earth would I use the heavier, less powerful engine? And the reason is thrust vectory. When you tap the W S D to move to steer the ship, this will actually angle the thrust the way you want to go. So that way it'll actually push the rocket. This one won't. You just have to wor uh, rely on the auto SAS feature to do it. But this, it's much more mobility. So we're going to add a decoupler. And we're going to put another hammer one on there just to get us into orbit. Or at least up in the atmosphere. This time, we're actually going to use a decoupler. We're going to put it to double symmetry down here in the bottom. And hook this onto the side. You guys like jazz? You gotta be worried about part clipping when you put this in, because if I do it like this, it won't work properly. Well, it, for the most part it will, but not really. So we also want to be aerodynamics. We're going to put some nose cones on that, and we want some steering as well, so we're going to put a fin on there as well, just for ease of use. I'm going to adjust my staging here. I want this engine, this engine, and this engine to all burn at once, so I'm moving those into the same stage. Then those go, and then this one will still have fuel when the time these are empty. So then next I decouple this one, and then the liquid fuel comes in. This should have more than enough to get us into orbit. And the name suggestion is Jebediah's Grave with a bunch of E's. E's. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. You'll see. He'll live. He's a resilient man. He's hot too. Alright, here, look how fast we're taking off. We have so much thrust because we have these extra boosters. Alright, they're out of fuel, so we send those away, and those annihilated each other. Oh, we're pitching sideways. Ooh, auto SAS to control the flight. Nice, we saved it. We're going to angle up a little bit just to get our path back on track. That's out of fuel, we can send that. Max out the fuel and ignite the liquid. Liquid fuel thrusters. And right now, I'm doing just like little tapping while I'm still on SAS. It's just uh, slight orbit modifications. Alright, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see if we can get data from high above Kerbin. You tried to kill him, it is reasonable to assume that it might be his grave. My goodness. Atrocious. Alright, we got more space music going on. So, I'm just going to time warp up to Apoapsis, watching the counter down in the bottom left. Up until I get pretty high in the skies. And I'm going to do a material study. Space, however, Kerbin. 37 and a half science from that one experiment. We can do mystery goo now as well. 15. 12 science. Measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible, as there is no matter around to either be hot or cold, except for the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. This is probably going to give the R&D guys something to think about for quite some time. Pressure scan, it's in vacuum, duh. Alright, so now, while we're not dead yet, we're gonna get out of the craft, collect the data from this, because we will decouple this, and it will splash down, and the data will be destroyed, so we wanna grab it and store it in the command module, but first, we're gonna do an EVA report. 12 science, space high over Kerbin. Surprised you didn't have anything philosophical to say. So now we can get back in, we can close these, and we can do a crew report. Seven and a half. Not too shabby. Alright, we're coming back down now. We've already got the science we have, we need, so... Oh dear, I really hope he doesn't die. This is going to be entertaining. Um... Not gonna lie. 
I'm a little nervous. We're just gonna time warp down to Carmen line again. Uh, we're coming down at a very steep angle of attack here. Just look at this. At um, 1725 meters per second and counting. That's uh, a little bit over, a, a little bit less than 100 is a football field for, you know, comparison. No, he's not about to die. I'm actually going to decouple that. Oh, the mystery goods are going to blow up. <sighs> okay. So the only thing that survived is, of course, Jebediah and the two barometer pressure units. So those, uh, those fireworks, they were from the uh, Mr. Goose, the thermometer, and the rest of the craft disintegrating as it hit the atmosphere. Luckily, these things have built-in heat shields, so that's nice. Um, and now we're going to hit the parachute. And we're going to time warp the rest of the way, because it takes a while. Especially once the chute opens, we're only descending at 5 meters per second, so... What did I say? He, we were incorrect, he lived. Look at this, we're about to splash down in the Kerbin's water. I'm actually going to do another EVA report to get a sample of the water. You've taken a sample of the water. It appears to dramatically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. That's pretty deep, you know. 12 science and EV airport. Yeah, it's 3 science. And uh, recover. So now we can go back to the KSC. Alright, 157 science. We can just clear that out. And uh, now we can figure out what we want to unlock next. So I'm just now deciding what we should take with us. Mm. What's fuel systems? Oh, fuel systems is 90. Okay. I'm going to get advanced rocketry. And I'll have enough for fuel systems as well. Perfect. I think we can go to Minmus now, actually. I want heavy rocketry, though. Yeah, I need a heavy rocketry and general construction to get to the Mun. But we've got... We can do space planes later. I'm not really fussed about them, to be honest. They're hard to fly. We also want the EVA science experiments as well, so for on outside of the thing, so. Alright, moving on. The only reason he is alive because this game doesn't use logic, he lived for three years without food or water. He is p a powerful person, and yes, this game uses logic, at least when it comes to physics. Alright, next ship. So now we've got these bigger ones, but these are for the next size of parts. So for the other 2.5 millimeter, these are only 1.12, I think. We can look at the heat shields for the size. Yeah, 1.25 meters. So we're actually going to throw one of these bad boys on there. That'll help us slow down a lot more when we're entering the atmosphere. So now... We're gonna head to Minmus. You ready? We're gonna head to a new. What should we call this ship as we name it again? Uh, we're gonna head to Minmus. We're gonna head to the m another moon. It's gonna be fantastic. Believe, please. We're gonna use these new fuel tanks that we have. I don't have any SAS, do I? Or any extra ones? Let's just do it. Put some swivel engines on it. Alright, so now 
we can, with this little thing called a fuel duct, we can now do asparagus staging. And I'll explain what that is in a second. I'm gonna set our symmetry to two. And I'm gonna start building this bad boy. Ah, uh, we'll do it this way. We're gonna start with one of these. We've got two of these really tall fuel tanks. So we're gonna do one and a half of them for our side boosters. And so we're gonna use swivel engines because we want that thrust vectoring. And we're gonna put a nose cone on top. So now what we can do is we can hit left alt and copy it and we can put it here. We're gonna try to get it to line up. Right like that, that looks pretty even. Pretty even, Steven. So now, what we can do is we need to take fuel ducts and strap this one to this, and this one back to our main rocket. And then, since we still have it on two symmetry, that the same thing has happened there. And so we also want to add some struts. But I'm not getting the struts. Uh-oh. Well, let's just fly it anyway. Let's see how we do. This is the kind of cutting edge technology we have here. We're gonna do four landing struts. And we also want, um, I didn't grab illuminator lights either. All right, so maybe this is in preparation for Minmus. Maybe we do a Minmus flyby first. Um, do we have any photovoltaic panels? For light, we don't, so we just have the batteries. Okay. So I'm gonna put a few of these batteries on the bank here. We're just gonna put like, just a few, not many. Slide them over one snap. I, yeah, one more, for good measure. Alrighty. Jebediah's Vessel to Heaven. I actually like this one. Because we're technically going to the heavens, so. I'm gonna get my staging right now. So we're getting all the engines to fire at once. And so I'm gonna explain asparagus, asparagus staging real quick. So basically, when you have these fuel ducts, the uh, fuel drains from this main one, or these ones, into the main one. And so you're draining these first two here first. And then when they decouple, these ones are left fuel filled because you're burning, all five engines are burning these two uh, boosters fuel. And so then once those are gone, it burns these two. And then once those are gone, you have a full main vessel that is filled with liquid fuel. And so it's basically free delta V, which is here, which are meters per second. So I think that looks good. I need a bit more science, but that's fine. All right, so we're actually probably just gonna get one from orbit, just enough to, um, well, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Let's just launch. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I belched a little bit there. All right, so now I'm gonna start pitching the vessel over. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm taking advantage of Kerbin's rotational orbit to save some free energy. All right, those are gone, we can send those away. And the fuel that's left is down here in the bottom. So now we can keep turning. We're at about 10,000 meters. Oh, I went too far. Oh, it's fine. Oh, no, it's not fine. Or is it? Oh, we're perfectly fine. Look at that recovery. Now, Jebediah, he's a dab hand as a pilot, you know? He's cracked. I actually haven't done goo from Kerbin Flight, so. Free 20 science. And I can probably do another crew report. 
I can observe the goo again though, for an extra two science. I'm just gonna fix our orbit after that little maneuver that happened. And decouple those boosters and now those are gone. Alright, our apoapsis is pretty high, so I'm going to stop accelerating, I'm going EVA, and I'm actually going to collect this, and that as well, and now we can board again. And I think I'm just going to keep going up for a little bit. I'm going to get our apoapsis to 100 kilometers over sea level. Alright, now I'm going to time warp up to near apoapsis. So burning to uh, expand your orbit is most effective at periapsis, which is the lowest point in your orbit. The second most effective point is at apoapsis, the highest point in your orbit. And so I'm time warping a little bit to get closer to apoapsis, that way I can expand my orbit, my orbital path, shown by this blue line on the map screen which you're seeing for the first time, and I can expand this to get actually an orbit around Kerbin. All right, here we go. I think I waited too long, but who cares? We can see the polar ice caps over there. I don't know if I have enough. I have plenty of room though. Oh yeah, we're fine. So you only need like 700 meters per second of delta V to get back from Minmus to Kerbin. And it's about a thousand from the Mun to Kerbin. The Mun is actually harder to get to and back than Minmus, which is interesting. I think we've just got enough to circularize around Kerbin. There we go. So now we're in Kerbin orbit. We're in low Kerbin orbit. Got 2,000. I'm gonna do a Minmus flyby. Just dragging the prograde out. This is okay, so I need to explain this as well. Uh, this is an actual space flight maneuver, node maker. This is rocket science in order to change your orbital path. Basically, to get in orbit, you fly up high in the sky, throw yourself at the ground, and miss. And that's how you get into an orbit. So now we're just using the same markers, prograde, retrograde, pro prograde, retrograde to expand and shrink it, R normal, anti-normal to change the tilt, radial in and radial out to change the angle. So I'm going to reset this. And so we're using that to adjust our orbit path. And so these two markers are the closest approach from our target. So we're going to adjust this. Oh, we saw a brief flash of a Minmus encounter. I need to add a little bit more delta V. All right, there we go. And you also want our Minmus flyby to be pretty close to the planet itself, just so we can get science from, well, we can get science from above it for now. So, all right, so now our orbit is in about one rotation of Kerbin. So we're just gonna time warp around to our orbit port, orbital to the, right before the maneuver node. But yeah, I hope everything else is sounding good. Oh, 
I hope y'all are enjoying the stream, those of you that are here watching. I kind of like doing Kerbal, it's a little bit more chill. Alright, so now we're going to point at our maneuver node that we've made and start burning. So now we're burning at periapsis, which is the most effective place to burn at because of something called the O-Birth effect. The more efficient, you can be more efficient with your burn by uh, burning as much as you can at periapsis because that has the most effectiveness of your orbit by uh, rotational energy. So now we're going to decouple this stage and fire our last stage, which has 2,000 meters per second of delta V left, very efficient in two space maneuvers. We're going to get rid of this and just wait until those maneuver nodes go together a little bit. And there we go. So now we have our encounter. And once we get up to here, we have our, this is the time of our encounter, escape. And if we just do nothing, getting into Mimis orbit, we will have this purple line will be our next orbit. And so that's actually going to be really, really low in Kerbin's atmosphere. That'll get us right back into the KSC. But if we were to capture around Minmus, we'd want to get to Minmus Periapsis and slow down, burn retrograde. So we're just going to click up here and time warp all the way out. We're going at 10,000 times real-time speed right now in this time warp. Space music is relaxing. Maybe make me want to take a nap. Go to sleep. Here, I'll turn it up for you. And now it's going back down. Alright, so now we're almost there. I'm just going to... Oh, I can't warp so far. I'm just going to start manually time warping. I'm going to be careful. You don't want to go too far. It's very easy to go too far with time warp. Usually once you hit something important, it slows you down. There we go. But you gotta be very careful with that. It's very easy to get lost. And so, this would be a very... tilted orbit of Minmus, so if we were to burn retrograde right now, we'd be capturing around. Honestly, I think we can go to Minmus just like this. I'm just going to do some Mr. Goose science real quick. 25 science for that. 20 science for that. 30 science for that. EVA report. 20 science for that. Oh, we're rich. And the crew report to round it off. The lake beds seem relatively flat. Perhaps we could land there. Perhaps, Jebediah. But uh, for now... I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit. I want to get a few more parts before we do that. I've already collected the data from it. Okay, per perfect. So we can collect the data from here. Take data. Take data. Even better space music. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So there's Minmus. It's a uh, made of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Or at least that's what... Kerbal Lore tells us, look how happy he is. He's so happy. He's just thrilled. What's our... Oh, we're looking clean on stuff. Alright, so I'm going to zoom back out. Our orbit, we're just going to escape into orbit. So this is what our periapsis will be once we escape Minmus' sphere of influence. Which is where its gravity has more of an effect than uh, Kerbin's. So now, we're just going to time warp to the end. Alright, now we're back in Curb and Sphere of Influence. And we're just going to go right down this darker section of the line that's not as vibrant is the uh, path that we're taking where this bright stuff is where we've just been. So I'm just going to time warp down very carefully because I don't want to go too far and just clip through the atmosphere. Alright, I'm going to cancel the time warp. Then I'm going to warp to right before we get into... Kerbin's sphere of influence. I'm gonna go back to our trusty 
map screen, SAS. There's Kerbin again, back home. And the space music's about to go away. By the time we're back down, back to the Carmen line, where it's gonna shut off automatically. And this time, you thought entering the atmosphere at 1500 meters per second is bad. We're hitting it at 3,235 meters per second. So, we have a heat shield that can take it. But uh, these mystery goo units are definitely going to get destroyed. And so is the thermometer. So, what I'm going to do... Oh, those landing legs might get destroyed too. So, I'm going to do a retrograde burn to slow down. See that number is going down. We're shrinking our orbit from way out there. Now it's inside the Mun's influence. Those landing legs could very well blow up. It's not time for Jebediah to die. Let's go to Jebediah's view for this. Actually, doesn't look that bad, except for the you know the flames licking the side of the capsule. Oh, the camera's adjusting since we're coming back close to Kerbin. All right, we've slowed down enough to the point where it'd be actually better for us to slow down more if we decouple and let our heat shield take it. This is called aero braking. It works on planets with a thick atmosphere like Kerbin. Duna works as well, and uh, but it's mainly important on Even Jewel. Now that might blow up. Hopefully, it falls back down to Kerbin. That way, it doesn't kill the space dolphins. It doesn't actually look that bad. Oh, there it goes. It blew up. There we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, there's a piece of it. We might pass it. Oh, the science gear units are heating up. Ship burst into flames. The ship is on fire. We have so much ablator left. And this ablative heat shield. Which is the material that stops the fire from killing us. Our periapsis is... Our ap apoapsis is well in the atmosphere. We're definitely going to live. Mission accomplished. The thing is, if you hit the atmosphere too sharp, you'll die and disintegrate and blow up in the atmosphere from the heat. And if you go too shallow, you'll just bounce off and be lost into the void forever. Alright. Flames are no longer licking the side of the capsule. We're slowing down pretty quickly now. We're getting ready to pass 700 meters per second. So now we're just going to time warp down to a point where it wouldn't take so freaking long for the parachutes to slow us down once they expand and fill up with air. I'm actually surprised none of our science units exploded from, you know, hitting the atmosphere at 3,000 meters per second. We're going to actually do an EV airport in the mountains while we're here, just because that'll give us a little bit more science. Alright, now we slow down. I'm going to time warp down to the Kerbin's ground. These beautiful mountains. Alright. Log in some basic data while we're here. Let me go EVA real quick. Get a surface sample of nine science and an EVA report just to get some little basic science. And recover. Minmus flyby complete. So next I think we could do a Mun flyby and then we'll go to Minmus. And then I think once we go to Minmus. I think that would be a safe place to end the stream if we feel like it. I don't know, it's been of a day. But yeah, let's just get some more science. We can do advanced fuel systems, interesting. I want very heavy rocketry, or heavy rocketry. I wanted solar panels. Or do I want... 
I need better landing legs too. Oh, I need the rocket max parts, and then I'll get. Uh, hmm. Uh, I need these. Um, I'll get flight control. All right, I just want to look at some of our science reports that we have. So these are everything in here. Right now we have most of our reports are on Kerbin and we don't have anything on the Mun. We've got a few on Minmus, mostly in space high over doing a flyby. Most of our stuff is on, this is the amount of, the amount of science experiments we have on Kerbin. We've got a lot because that gave us that initial boost to get to where we are. All right. I think I might use the same vessel to do a MUN flyby. Nah, let's just do it. So we can do the same thing, but for the MUN. Get some data from that. And then we'll actually go to Minmus. We'll actually go to another moon this time. Another celestial body, if you will. Excuse me. So, but for now, we're just going to do our standard takeoff procedure. I'm actually going to time warp this up a little bit just because it takes a while. We're just going to do some little touches just to help adjust our trajectory here. We're going pretty fast that our ship shouldn't really flip. But with these small 1.5 meter parts, it, uh, it it's, it's a little bit unwieldy at speed. You didn't let me name the rocket this time. I had a good one planned. Well, you can use it next time for when he actually does have a high risk of dying. <laughs> How's that sound? That sound good? Well, you let me know. In the meantime, we're going to time warp up to our apoapsis and do our burn to get another orbit. All right. I'm going to do a full burn to get the most out of this vessel, out of its efficiency. We have a long way to go before periapsis hits. All right, we can decouple those boosters. Now they're done. We've got a tank full of gas, ready to go. Just making some slight adjustments. That way we're still spending a maximum amount of time burning at the most efficient part of the trajectory. I've already messed up this launch from a quote unquote perfect one. But that's all right. It's looking like this one will turn out somewhat okay. We've still got 400 meters, 4,000, excuse me, meters per second delta V left. So hopefully in time, this should be well in a good looking orbit. I usually plan for an apoapsis of around 75 for when I start burning prograde to expand it and then usually it ends up at 80, 85 by the time a full orbit has happened. A full circular orbit of Kerbin. But for this it's at the point where it doesn't really matter how efficient or inefficient I am with my fuel. Throttle down, that way I'm not burning my fuel as much. I'm actually going to do a tiny bit of time warping real quick just to get my burn just a little bit more efficient. And now it's 
no matter what I do, it's quickly going to increase the apoapsis. So I'm just going to go right to apoapsis and burn to get that prograde node out, or that periapsis node out. I'm sorry. And there we go. Now it's going to flip. 113 and 115,000, that's pretty freaking close. And set the Mon as our target. The Mon is actually somewhat easier to get to than Minus. It's a bit harder to return since it has a bigger sphere of influence. But it's actually coplanar with Kerbin's orbit, so unlike Minus, which is on a tilt. But for a lot of time with Minus, it doesn't matter since it's uh, so close. But for now, it's fine. I'm going to add our maneuver. And for really this one, all I have to do is drag our prograde node out. And see, look at that. Look at that easy peasy encounter. I'm gonna get this bad boy, uh, I'll leave it pretty far away. Cause I wanna get space above the mun, space high over the mun before I do space near the mun when I actually do the thing. All right, that should be fine. That'll be good. I actually want to get my periapsis to be pretty low. That way I don't have to worry about it. Alright, that's going to be pretty freaking close. Alright, so we're going to time up around to our maneuver node after one 30 minute orbital period. The period on the gauge is the amount of time it takes to do a complete rotation from your sphere of influence. So right now at this height our period of curbing is about 33 minutes and 39 seconds of real time. But we're time warping at 100 times normal speed. So, And the important thing is we're not burning fuel here, we're just following our trajectory. It's kind of like when you throw a coin into those wishing wells at like Walmart or whatever for Make-A-Wish. It's no longer getting any propulsion, it's just following its tra trajectory. So I messed up my time warp. I didn't place it perfectly with the maneuver node to get the most efficient burn. But it doesn't really matter all that much. And now we get to listen to the good space music. I'm going to get ready to stage the rocket. This one's about to run out of gas. I can just time warp out to our encounter with the mud. Nice. So I'm not actually going to land on the mud just because I certainly do not have enough delta V to get back. One, for starters, I'd need 400 meters per second just to circularize around the mud. And then I need about four to 500 for my descent. Uh, I could do it. It would be very, very close, though. There would be no margin for error. But, anyway. There's what the MUN looks like. So now, we can just do our science. Our crew report. Thermometer scan. Pressure data. Some good looking science from this. We can observe our mystery goo. We can do our material study. 50 science, oh my goodness. We can do our crew, oh we already have a crew report, but we can do EVA. And now we're going to collect these experiments. And put them all in there. Stranding Jebediah, I'm not going to. Alright, so now we can just time warp out of the Mun's sphere of influence. Goodbye, Mun. Miss ya. Go here, SAS. To shrink my orbit, I'm going to do a small retrograde burn, just enough to get ourselves into Kerbin's sphere of influence. No need to hit the atmosphere too, too hard. I'm going to put us in for about 40 
Well, 35. Close enough. Good enough for government work. So now there's Kerbin. We're actually about to get a lunar eclipse. Maybe. Okay, so it doesn't look as cool in real life. And it's only an eclipse of us. It's not really eclipsing. But, I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell that. But it still kind of looks cool. What? I'm busy. Alright, so I accidentally went too far and I clipped it through it, but it's fine. We can just walk around. Alright, here we go. The Boof Death Song. Yeah, I'm streaming by the way. Another dude was there for a while, but he left and actually came and said hi. Ashley's gone, I think, as well. The goddess of rats, remember? We're just casually hitting the atmosphere at 2,000. Why the heck are you streaming Kerbal? Because Kerbal is a fun game. The game wasn't out when I was seven. The game came out the same year as Rocket League in 2015. Six or something. Woo, girl, this is nice. uh, that bit's gonna blow up. You ready? It's gonna be fireworks in a minute. He's gonna. There it goes. He's gonna, implode. He's gonna crap his pants. Is what's gonna do. He's fine. Look at him. He is so happy. He's not. Yeah, I've been. Sorry. I've been getting. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've been. Boss boss 430. I've been getting them to name my the, my ship for everyone. So the first one, the Today. other dude picked it. The other dude. Oh, okay. They kept going back and forth making the names, and the first one was just called Rocket. Oh, well, that's creative. Yeah, and then and then Emma took over the process. Oh, good lord. And. <laughs> what did you name it? They kept getting increasingly grim. What were the names? I hate you. Jebediah's coffin, Jebediah's grave, <gasps> Jebediah's uh, vessel to heaven. R.I.P. that Jebediah. Oh gosh. Emma, no. I will list them all. I did list them all. And I can show her. I don't find out if I got to call back there tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if I got, like, you don't know if you get called back or not until tomorrow, like, right before lunch. That is unfortunate. They don't tell you what songs they want you to So you gotta know them all. So I have to know all the songs, because I have no idea which ones I'm being considered. And I have to know the duet, because if they're considering me for Sarah... Then I have to know that song. Be able to sing it with somebody else. Guys have the harmony for once. Jebediah's coffin, Jebediah's final resting place, Jebediah's grave. Uh, sorry, not Jebediah's grave. Jebediah's gravy. Gravy? Jebediah's, well, it says grave with multiple E's, and instead of doing gravy, yeah, grav. Vessel to heaven. What if he's going to hell? Like he's, a, he's a Christian Kerbal. Like, did, did we consider the we, 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 we preach to him the gospel. <laughs> well, anybody's going to accept anything if they're on. Yeah, we've got Rocket, we've got.
coffin, we've got final resting place, we've got grave and vessel to heaven. Alright, so now this bad boy is gonna about to go to freaking... He's a mouse. What? What are you, a man? Or a... <laughs> what are you, a man or a mouse? No, Emma, you don't get to name it. Shark right, cool. shoe. Yes, she does get to name it. I told what? her she could. Alright, what's your idea, Emma? Yes, Mexi Green Man. Like me. I decided that I can go to the hockey game. By the way. Did Emma convince you? No, she didn't say anything about it. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, let's go, Emma! See, I would go, but I wouldn't, first of all, someone want me to go to a hockey game by myself. Oh, did I not get the sh- Oh, I did get In the sh- In general, like, back. hockey games by yourself is boring. Like, you have to go with friends. It's violent. But like, let alone a midnight hockey game? Woo -hoo. Oh, I could go with I could go with Maddie Jennings. I don't know who that is. Tucker graduated two years ago. Ah, yes, I do know her. Short, curly hair, the least. Okay. She's my. Wow. Uh, do I not have, Do you uh, know anybody that watches this? Like, know anybody? What? Like, you know that people watch it, but, like, do you know any of the people that watch it? Do you mean not know any of the people that watch it? Like, that are not my friends? Yeah. Yes. But who do you know that watches it that are your friends, other than Emma? Ashley. <laughs> other than Ashley. <laughs> no one. We're on, oh, we're on five viewers right now, and I only know one of them. Emma, my only issue with the concert is that it's funny. What's the, uh... Sharon, 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 Sharon's boat? Yeah, how do you say that? <laughs> Karen. Karen's Karen. boat? not expensive, Emma. It's free. At least to me. She said care on. I mean... That is indeed what she said. Well, it's not free, actually, because it's a D1 game. Dude, it's cheaper... The hockey game is a heck of a lot cheaper than freaking $25 concert tickets. Although, concert... That, for a concert, is very cheap. Are we paying for concert tickets? Well, who do you want to pay for it? The money tree? I don't know. Usually when you invite someone, a lot of times you front the cost for expenditures, but fair enough. Nope. L. It's floor seats? That's impressive. At least they have seats this time. How do they still have seats if it's that close? Alright. Like, normally all the floor seats are sold out. I don't. But it's something to do. Okay. Coming. Alright, I think I got everything. Yes, Emma, we know you're illiterate. What? 
Well, you have a yes for me for the concert, just because it's something to do. <laughs> oh, really? You can come or not. Should I stay or should I go? Is your friend Wisp in this game? Yeah. Not really, but I know a couple of their songs. Fine. I'll come, Emma. I did name it your chosen name. You're gay. I'm gay. Oh, shut up. Oh. Alright. Adios, mi amor. I'm hey. He be hey for Trey. Moo. Bye, Felicia. Damn. And Levi's 25 subscribers. They're followers. This is Twitch, not YouTube. Although this will be going on my YouTube as well. Yeah, darn right. <laughs> yeah, everybody say hi, YouTube. Hola, YouTube. <laughs> Here. Here, watch this. <laughs> and Ryan Reynolds. Hi, YouTube. I already see you. Shut my door, would you? Thank you. Yes. No, she bought you some too. Where? On the counter, on the microwave. No, no, no. Put it back. <laughs> Put it back. You have your own. Stop it. You're hydrogenous. No hi to YouTube. Oh my goodness. She be trying to be stealing my gum, bro. She out of line. All right, so now we are well on our way to Minus. We have so much Delta V left. Holy. Holy smokes. All right, where are we at? We are at 50K meters and counting she didn't take any i stopped her so we're at 50k meters we're gonna go up to our avalanches as per usual burn prograde to circularize around kerbin and we're gonna set a course for minmus we actually set it as our target now these this line here splitting the orbital pattern of minmus is uh since it's on a tilt it's demonstrating the uh where the orbits are coplanar. Right now, Minmus is at a six degree tilt, which is uh, quite significant. All right, so we are almost there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start burning. It's gonna be, I actually don't know how much it's gonna cost. I'm just gonna keep it on my Delta V and see how much it is. I think it's somewhere in the realm of 500 or 700 meters per second. That I understand the name of the rocket. No, I don't know. Please enlighten me. This is getting way out of hand. We're actually going to time warp closer to Apoapsis to make the burn more effective. Alright, and now we're going to go prograde again. Alright, now prograde and retrograde have swapped perfectly. It happens quickly. Oh dear, okay. So, I'm going to warp around to the ascending node. And and burn anti-normal to get my to make my orbit coplanar with Minmus or at least as close as I can get it to that looks like it's going to be about as good as it is Karen is the man in Greek mythology who rose the dead people across the river in the underworld oh so he takes them off the uh, he takes them across the river Styx huh 
Interesting. So am I Karen in this in this instance? Karen. I guess I'm Karen. Alright, so I'm just gonna do a quick burn at anti normal to uh make our orbits as close to coplanar as they can be. There's still point one degrees of separation. But that'll be alright. And then once we do that, I wanna plot another maneuver node at Kerbal Kerbin Periapsis. To um expand orbit and get it out to where Minus is. Alright, so now we're at as close as we're going to get, so now we're going to go to Periapsis, which is the most effective place to burn prograde. It's pronounced Karen. Care on. Care, Karen. Okay. So at first I thought the Mun was going to get in our way, but it's looking like we're going to be just okay. Alright, so I'm going to go focus here because I really want this Mindus encounter to be clean. Uh, so I'm actually going to focus view here and adjust. One fifty eight. Oh, jeez. One ninety eight. That's a little bit too much. Oh. 63 okay well that's just fine we can we can adjust it later all right so now we're gonna go back here and it's in we're going back to orbit so we're gonna do another orbit of about 30 minute period again we're moving at the speed of about a hundred times normal time just because if you didn't this game would take uh, many many years to play in its entirety Alright, so when we get down to about 10 seconds before the thing, we are going to start burning. We're going to adjust our alignment to be set onto our maneuver node just a little bit, and now we shall burn. And I'll still have fuel left over in this stage, which is actually perfect. And that'll give us just a little bit to help us circularize super efficiently around Minmus. And it's going to be perfection. Alright, so I'm also going to stop that there real quick and switch to focus view to Minmus. So that way I can closely watch this burn. I'm actually going to get rid of this. And just once that swings around... Alright, so right now we're on a collision course, so I'm going to take this and limit the thrust down to like 8. Oh, and not all tab, I'm going to go back to the map screen. Alright, there we go. That'll... Okay, I'm also going to... Um, I want to make this orbit not as... Schizophrenic. I'm going to do a... So I'm going to do a small little course correction to get ourselves into an equatorial orbit of Minmus. It's only going to be like 12 meters per second of delta V. So I'm just going to burn that real fast. I'm actually going to turn off the RCS control because it's adjusting my orbit since it's so small. Alright, that should be good. 
I'm gonna turn off SAS because I don't really have solar panels yet. Which is hopefully what this one will provide because right now I'm running on limited electronic charge. I mean, to be fair, I have about 550 units left, but still. Something we keep in mind, and I have, I've burned almost half of my monopropellant already. But that's fine. Once I'm done with this stage, most of my usage for monopropellant will be a uh, void. I'm going to speed up the time warp just a little bit. Oh shoot, I haven't, haven't had my like dialogue things turned on. Deary me. Oh well. L for me. Alright, so now we're going to time up just a little bit farther ahead to get into our Minmus encounter. And hopefully this should be perfection. Uh, time warp down here. Ye. What is ye? Kanye? Kanye? Alright, so now I'm just gonna get as close to periapsis as I can. And burn retrograde. Once the time warp has stopped. This music is so good. Yeah, it's the space music for uh, this game. It's uh, very cool. It's very uh, soothing and calming. Alright, so now I'm just going to burn retrograde to slow down and circularize around in this. Oh, I still got my thrust limiter on. Let's uh, jack that back up again. Now we're out of fuel in this stage. Turn off our RCS. Decouple that, start this one. Get a little bit of separation. And I'm actually just gonna continue burning. I'm gonna land one of the riskier spots. I'm gonna land there. Cause I don't currently have a good rotation to land in one of the greater flats, which are these smoother areas here. <sighs> well, actually I do, hold on, let's uh, Alright, we're going to land in one of the greater flats anyway. Because I have made adjustments to my craft. And I'm going to angle retrograde. And I'm just going to time warp down to relative to where I need to be. I'm not going to go too fast because I can just... The time warp in this is... I mean, it's really good for what it is. But still, when you mess with physics and stuff, it can get a little bit hairy at times. And the other thing is, I don't have landing lights, so I'm trying my best to land in the daytime. I'm actually going to kill off all my horizontal velocity right here. That way, I just go straight down. Alright, there we go. Point retrograde again, and I'm just going to time warp down. Alright, so now we've gotten close enough that the time warp will stop automatically. And so now we can see our shadow over here coming down onto the greater flats of Minmus. So I'm going to put down my landing legs and just uh, monitor my speed. And hopefully I should have a lot so I can go to another area of the planet and get data from a different biome. That way I can make it all in one fell swoop. So this is called a suicide burn for good reason. Uh, you kind of want to guess how long it'll take you to stop, to get yourself down to a stop, because um, you don't want to waste too much fuel trying to slow yourself down only if you just speed up again because you timed it too too early. And then if you time it too late, you're not going to slow down enough, and then you're going to slam into the surface of whatever body you're trying to land on. Oh, 
And there we go. So now we can do some of our science. We can do a material study, which is the biggest one. 125 science. Uh, Mr. Goo. Good or flat, so that's 50 science again. 40 science from the temperature. And 60 science from the barometer. And then I'm also going to do a crew report. And now I'm actually going to get out of the ship. Yeah, I'll enable my RCS jetpack so I can fly now a little bit. I don't have too much fuel here, but... At, it'll last a long time. So now, I'm going to actually plant a flag here for our landing. Make Jebediah lick the ground and see if it's really made of ice cream. Oh, we've just planted a flag and now the music has changed. Uh, Jeb's landing. This is going to be zone 101 since it's Minmus, it's the first planet on. Uh, greater flats. Enjoy the music. You feel a bit like a superhero when you jump into low gravity. 40 signs. Take surface sample. You sneak a taste of the surface sample. Nope, it is definitely not made of delicious dessert. Products. So, let's see what we can see from this view. Okay, so we can't see any of our planets because we're on the opposite side. Okay, never mind. I gotta go for a couple minutes, you'll be back. Alright, cool. Alright, so I'm gonna go back into this ship, put this science away. And so, since I don't have a scientist with me, since I only have the one person-sized command pod, I can't restore these modules, so I can't run the Science Junior again in a different biome. But, alright, so this is facing the right way, so I can just go, I'm gonna go, oh shoot. go this way just a little bit watching my delta v i'm gonna get us up to 50 and i'm gonna stop i'm actually gonna burn a bit more prograde well let's look at our map see where we're gonna land okay i need to give it a bit more at prograde all right there we go I'm just watching until I get onto that other biome. I can't warp because I'm below 3,000 meters, so we just have to wait. <laughs> so now we just get to listen and vibe to the space music.
Alrighty. So now... I'd like to take this time to thank you all for watching the stream. If you're enjoying this, please chat, follow. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, and maybe leave a comment telling me how much you love Midness and that amazing face of our intrepid hero, Jebediah, in the command seat. Now that we have all the cringe stuff out of the way, we can get back to landing on Midness's uh, Midland, Midlands, I think this is. I could be wrong. But, with that being said, well, let's get back to the mission. After our vibe session. Beginning our descent. We're gonna slow down a little bit. All right, we don't just slam into the desert bed. That was a perfect landing. And uh, so in the future, I'm going to get some visual mods for Kerbal just to make it look a little bit better. This is Lowlands, okay. Um, there's a few popular ones that I'd like to take a look at that I've never actually used, so I feel like that'd be quite cool. How much data do I have? How much data can I store here? Alright, so I'm gonna get out and do another EVA report. Ooh! No, 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 Oh, frick. Oh. It's fine. I'll put another flag down. We're gonna call this... Zone 102. Uh, Lowlands. Ship fell over. The surface seems to consist of, of tiny crystal like grains. Very pretty, but probably not edible. Alright, so now I get to have the fun of pushing my ship back up. Alright. Oh, thank goodness. So because of, because Minmus's gravity is so low, you can just do that. <laughs> that won't really happen on any other planets apart from perhaps Gilly. All right, so now we're leaving our good old Minmus behind. We have got. Uh, Nothing left to do on this planet, so we can just burn for a bit, get our orbit up, and we can start heading back to Kerbin with all of our science. We're going to have, like, mm, I would hazard a guess at probably well over 500 science. 
that's just uh, my personal opinion. But I don't know. We'll have to find out. We've got enough delta V to get back home. We only need 700 meters per second to get from Minmus to Kerbin. And we've got a little over a thousand, so hopefully we should be good. So for now we can just burn prograde. Alright, there we go. We now have a stable orbit. So what we need to do now is select here and burn... Or am I wrong? I'm very, very wrong. Okay. We just need to change and play around with the maneuver node a bit just to get that periapsis around Kerbin as low as we can. And we can burn more than that as well. Yeah. I'm going to get this as low as possible. How low is that? I mean, it would work. That's 160. Yeah, it's not the best. I'm not even going to worry about that one yet. I'm just going to do this simple burn. So, yeah, for anyone who's just joining, this is a Kerbal Space Program. It's a, a full-on space flight simulator where you can control any aspect of your space program in a miniaturized analog version of the universe. Although, if we zoom out real quick, you can see it's already incredibly huge. So it's at like, I believe it's a one-fifth scale, but I don't know for sure. And we've just gotten a ton of data from, we're on a fresh science mode save, so if you know anything about Kerbal, science mode, you unlimited money, unlimited parts, you just have to unlock the parts by doing science missions, which in my humble opinion is the best way to play the game, even though I've never fully played through the game, I only have about 40 hours or so. But right now we've started by unlocking the basics of the tech tree, and now we are just, we are finally getting to Minimus for the first time in this save. And now we are finally returning home to Kerbin. Alright, so I'm just going to warp around to here. That way I can shrink my apoapsis by a little bit more, or my periapsis rather. We're not in the atmosphere at all, that's fine. Otherwise, I would have done the burn to slow us down enough to get in there, into the atmosphere, but. So now we're just gonna warp around to Apple Amps, burn retrograde to shrink our orbit a little bit, just to get it inside of the, uh, inside of Kerbin's atmosphere. I'm going to wait until that drops below 70k meters because that's the karma line, the border between space and the atmosphere of Earth, or in this case, Kerbin. So, normally I wouldn't do something this ambitious of such a shallow, or such a steep entry, rather, but this craft is very, very light, and it has a heat shield, not just the one attached to the ship, so I am very confident in our return. A lot of these parts won't make it though, they're going to blow up. But the only thing that matters is we've taken all this data out of these and stored them in the command module with Jebediah here. So there's really no concern. So we can just see curb in there. Pale blue dot kind of deal. We're going to use time warp 10,000 times normal speed. Alright, so now stop time warp. We're still over a million. Yeah, we're 1.6 million meters out. 
but we're getting back into Kerbin's sphere of influence. And so now we're just gonna time warp the rest of the way down. As with last time, our voyage to Minmus and the Mun, we're going to be entering the atmosphere at 3,235 meters per second for our initial contact, which is blisteringly fast. And so now, all we can do is really... I don't like landing on the dark side of planets. It makes it hard. Oh well, we don't really have a choice now. Our ship is on fire, guys. Alright, our landing legs are heating up, so I'm going to do a burn. This engine isn't efficient at all in atmosphere. It's most efficient at space with small vessels. But, it's uh, it's enough to slow us down and to keep the heat, the flames at bay. So, that's what's going to happen for the meantime. And, once we get to a point, usually around 2,500 meters per second, or unless our fuel runs out beforehand, then I'll decouple the stage, and then at that point our heat shield is... Well, our heat shield is already more than strong enough to take over, but... There's no need to risk it for the biscuit, you know what I'm saying? Alright, we can just go ahead and get rid of that, there's no need for it. I'm just gonna angle my ship away from it. That way it doesn't hit us and blow us to smithereens. But it should explode any second now. I lied to you. There it is. Should blow up. Will that not hit? Huh. I guess not. Alright, our science goo modules are heating up, but personally, I think they're going to survive re-entry. Our apoapsis has shrunken so much, and it continues to shrink, so we should be good. We've got so much ablator left, we've got well over three quarters of it. And this ablative heat shield, which res does the majority of the resisting the flames. It looks quite cool from here, actually. That looks less cool. You have returned, huh? You missed the three minutes of silence when we just vibed to uh, space music. Now we're just performing our descent onto the darkened cabin. Yeah, you love the space music? That's pretty much been the community census so far, so... So yeah, you can, uh, it is relaxing. So if you want, this video will be up in probably a few hours. This entire VOD will be up on my YouTube channel. So if you want, you can go and watch that. It's going to be near the end. It's probably going to be around the hour and 40 minute mark. All right, as we come to a stop, we can jettison our heat shield and get that to fly away, we don't need it. Just wiggle the craft until the heat shield flies away. We don't need the extra weight. And the atmosphere will slow you down to about 240 meters per second, although it might be a little bit less here. Or a little bit more, rather. And it's at this point that I like to pull the chute roundabout. Oh, look at that. 240 meters per second. At 5,000 feet from natural arrow breaking. Uh. Alright, so now for the boring part, we can just time warp down. Oh my, 
I'm tired. I hope everybody's day is going well. Mine has so far, which is nice. Alright, we can stop that and recover vessel. I'm guessing 300 plus science. Probably 500. 500 is my final prediction. Oh my gosh. That mission gave 867 and a half science. And now I have a total of 932 science. I want to see what space parts I left behind. I've only left behind three parts with all of those missions. Interesting. Alrighty, so let's see what we can... Here, first let's make it daytime. Warp to sunrise. And now let's see what we can unlock with this. Hopefully quite a bit. Alright, so we need photovoltaic panels and lights. Solar panels, pretty much. Um, we also need EVA sciences. We can get some parts for rovers and stuff. We can get a bigger command module. And some parts for that. Um, we can get the L2 landing struts. Advanced construction, and then... I have just enough for the advanced fuel systems. So we've made excellent progress. So next I want specialized construction for the fairings, protective fairings. And the uh, Clampotron docking ports, those are cool. Um, we need nuclear engines for efficient uh, interplanetary maneuvers. They're very efficient, but they have a very low thrust to weight ratio. Um, but they're very nice. We don't really care too much about... I mean, puff mod repellents or separatrons are alright. I don't really care too much about these two ones. These ones I don't care about. But I would like very heavy rocketry for uh, vector engines. Vector engines are very nice. And so are the mammodyne, mammoth engines, rather. Not uh, mammodyne and curvodyne. So then we can get large volume containment along that. Continuing along that thread, we can get large volume containment and very heavy rocketry to get the curbidine parts to make the 3.75 uh, meter part sizes. Uh, what else can there? We can get the shielded one, the biggest fairing. Oh, I would like that. But that's... How much science is that? 550 science? Oh my goodness. This we can do space plane stuff later. But we want... Oh, we need that. We need the big inflatable heat shield. That one's really nice. I think for the very next one I'm gonna get is advanced exploration. That way I can get these two ladders and the mobile processing lab. So what that does is you can take the data from the science experiments that we do, and you can put them in, and it multiplies the science that it yields, but it just takes a long time. So we need to get advanced exploration and advanced electrics to get the bigger solar panels and the bigger batteries and some radiator stuff so that we don't burn up. Ooh, and then after that we want electronics to get the magnetometer boom and the double C seismic accelerometer and a relay antenna just so that way these two parts are for more science this is for better communication so I am liking this this has been very productive um, so that's next but first before we end the stream we need to plan our next visit. We've gotten most of the science from the Mun and Minmus and Kerbin. So next stream, we're going to be tackling interstellar travel. So these question marks, these are just asteroids and comets that we haven't discovered yet. 
last seen three days ago, 36 days ago, 60 days ago, 20 days, 3 days, 2 days, 19, 1 day, and 3 days. I don't really care about those too much. Those are cool for ore and mining refilling, re uh, fuel refilling while on the fly. Mining excavation, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but we need to look at what our next destination is. I think we should, so we have Moho, Eve, Duna, Therese, Jewel, and Elu. I think I'm gonna go to Duna. Get some information from the Red Planet. Second. I don't follow. Yeah, I'm going to bed. Alrighty. <sighs> Don't go anywhere that you'll abandon precious Jebby. Oh dear goodness. I think he'll be fine. Yep, I think next is Duna. We can get Duna. And then we could probably hit Ike. Eve's moon Gilly is actually really small. It's a captured asteroid. So it's that's easy to go to. I'm not gonna hit Eve. Eve is really, really hard. It's easy to get to, but it's hard to leave because of its very thick atmosphere because it's Venus. Drez, there's nothing on Drez. I mean there's a couple Easter eggs, but there's like the Drez Canyon, which is a terrain glitch that was turned into an Easter egg. Um but I think I'm gonna go Duna, and I'm gonna go Gilly, and then I can go Jewel. And then you can, I can start conquering Jewel's moons. I think that'll be next time. But, for now, thank you all for watching Kerbal Space Program. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And uh, I don't know when I'll be back, but hopefully it'll be soon, maybe in the next few days or so. Might not be till next week. I don't know. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch, come by and say hi. If you want to say hi, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. This video in its entirety will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Um, link is in the description or in the about page of my Twitch. Um, if you're on there, comment, like, all the good stuff. Say hi. And that'll do it for today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day.